Hey everyone, welcome to Surf Soon, a numerically rated Surfcraft review series. If you dig this episode, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Now let's get to the show. In this episode, I'll be reviewing a 9.8 Dark Horse by Black Rose Manufacturing. The Dark Horse is Justin Quintal's version of a user-friendly parallel nose rider for those softer days. Similar to the Ricky Carroll Quintal model, the Dark Horse has many of the same attributes, but is slightly more refined. With its classic design, met with a flatter bottom. Well, let's get a closer look. The nose rocker is a touch more elevated than the tail rocker, allowing a little more time on recovery from nose rides, but also plenty of trim speed. The nose has a foiled 50-50 to a fuller 50-50 in the middle, meeting an even more foiled 50-50 in the tail. The bottom has a flat spot, quickly going into a nose concave for about one third of the board to a very, very slight roll, which gets a little more aggressive towards the tail. This episode is presented by Ferro Board Bags. Based out of San Diego, Ferro has the answer to anyone with several boards and no covers. Their brand ethos is durability, sustainability, and adjustability. Our favorite feature of these bags is that they can fit any length longboard easily and securely. As a bonus to our disorganized surfers, they developed the Traveler Fin Wallet. This 10 by 11 inch wallet is an easy answer for everyday surf, travel, and adventure. All Ferro products are handmade in the USA, and they're given back 1% of the sales to the Palos Verdes Kelp Restoration Project. All right, so first thoughts on the Dark Horse. You never really know what you're gonna get, especially when you're getting something off Craigslist or online and never actually feeling the board. So I wasn't sure what this board was gonna be like, if it was gonna be something that is just big and parallel and maybe kind of bulky, but I'm actually pretty surprised with how well the rails were kind of foiled and also the amount of volume overall. It's a really lightweight and it felt really good underneath the arm, but uh, let's get to categories. All right, so nose riding, I gave it an 8.5 and uh, the nose concave creates lift and obviously the wide parallel outline, you can see it has a lot of width even coming all the way up here and all the way to the very tip of the nose, uh, there's no real tapering of it, so it does allow a lot of stability while walking up. Um, it has these turned up rails underneath, and I feel like it makes the board sit a little lower, which I feel kind of creates a little bit more suction, even though the tail is still wide. It's not as wide as the nose, obviously. Um, I do like the nose rocker as well, as I'm starting to realize that I think I just like a little bit more nose rocker. It allows me to stay up here just a little bit longer, kind of straighten out and also take my time walking back without worrying about purling. Maneuver, I gave it a 7.25 and you know, I don't think this board is really focusing on maneuvering. Um, it is allowing for the little heel toe adjustments to kind of help when stabilizing up onto the second half of the board. But all in all, I think this is kind of more meant to nose ride over anything. It does turn. Uh, I feel like it needs a certain type of fin and we'll be talking about that in a little bit. But it definitely does have enough rocker where you can feel it tilt but you're not gonna be able to get those carvy turns out of it, unless maybe a wave with a lot of speed and a lot of power, but this board's kinda more made for those mushy days that maybe you wouldn't normally surf, in my opinion. Tram, I gave it a 7.5, and uh, I think it's just not really made to do that. I think it's made to more uh, nose ride and do little adjustments. Trimming, I just didn't really feel it kind of connect in sections. It, it gets a little slow and I think it also has to do with the amount of width in the nose and also the nose rocker itself. Um, I did find that for me personally, the best spot to trim 
was kind of more in this area, which is not normally where that would be. But uh, just keep your feet together and stay still and you'll probably get through the section, but a little slow at deep spots. And yeah, that's just kind of the way this thing goes. Volume distribution, 7.75. Uh, at its widest point, this is almost 24 inches wide. And surprisingly enough, it doesn't feel as big as it actually is. Um, I found that since going from the middle, it's tapering off volume, keeping it kind of lower and a little bit of a smaller volume. It is a nice thing to have in a nose rider, especially when most nose riders are maybe a little bit more thicker and all in all, maybe a little heavier, which uh, makes it trim a little bit better, but doesn't allow it to do these little adjustments that you can do on this board on its heavier companions. Paddling, I gave it a 7.5 and uh, that's a pretty high score for a very parallel style looking nose rider. They don't paddle well. They're, they're more made to nose ride in my opinion, especially when you have this much nose rocker and you have this much uh, nose concave, you know, you're just pushing water. But I was surprised at how well it did paddle into some pretty gutless little waves. And it's a pretty good paddler when it's a little on shore or just kind of blowing right into the direction that you're trying to paddle. It cuts through pretty well. So yeah, 7.5. Special moments, I gave an 8.5. Um, although I've been surfing for a long time, I haven't been longboarding for, or at least taking longboarding as seriously as I do nowadays. And my style is kind of ever changing. And I was, I think, a little bit more in tuned in the past of being able to maneuver a board. But now that I'm starting, to be able to get up to the nose more comfortably. I'm really looking for that feeling pretty consistently. And this board actually gave that. Um, you know, it's, it's not gonna be the best board for an all-arounder, but it nose rides pretty well and it feels super stable going up. I had maybe not the longest nose rides, but consistency was key. And even if they were quick, they felt really comfortable. And that's all special moments. It's nice to have a nose rider that works well on the East Coast and beach break. And this is definitely something that they worked on and did. So fin wise, I just stuck with this. I was gonna try another fin, but I really enjoyed this one. This is the Sea Monster in uh, 10 inch. This is by Flying Diamonds. It's just almost like a mix between CJ's almost a nose rider fin and then a pivot fin. It's really good weight. It's pretty light. Uh, and I just never had any issues with the back sliding out. Always felt drivey, but still gave that heel toe. So that way I was able to kind of like manipulate the board in the wave. All in all, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I was gonna try a smaller, more uh, Greeno style fin and then just realized that I feel like there's a reason why people are riding fins like that in boards like this and I get it, but these are the fins that I think should be ridden in boards like this. So yeah, this is definitely a good one, Flying Diamonds. So final thoughts and it kind of goes with the special moments, um, again, my style is ever changing and this was a fun board to have in the quiver to concentrate more on nose riding itself. I liked it that it wasn't super bulky and super heavy. I have a couple nose riders that are and honestly they're just like a nightmare just to even get down to the beach at times. And this one, it's got a decent weight. It's got enough weight to be able to feel very comfortable up here, but also 
feel loose enough where if you had to make a quick little turn, you can, little adjustments, and uh, you know, that's uh, kind of what I'm thinking. Uh, not a great beginner board, but if you're looking to get some, some feet up in that area, definitely a board to check out for sure. Thank you everyone for tuning in. If you like this episode, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Feel free to share, comment, and all that good stuff. Until next time, there are always waves on the way. So hang tight, surf soon. A great way to support the show even further is to grab some of our limited edition apparel. All of our apparel is designed and printed in-house by us at Surfcraft Union. To purchase, you can visit our website at www.surfcraftunion.com.